Well, it's 2021. We've seen a whole load of reviews in the last few weeks. And the big focus, the big views, is always what the drivers do. How well are the new drivers performing? As average golfers, we're obsessed with distance and not necessarily what is best for our game. We had a chat here earlier this morning in terms of, in terms of um, technology. Where have the greater advancements come? And I think perhaps not in drivers, but the clubs I'm going to review today, there's four of them, they're hybrids. They're so far different from what they were just five years ago that I think we should be paying a lot more attention to putting these kind of clubs in our bags and forget that obsession with the driver. Right, so four hybrids in question. We've got a PXG, we've got one from TaylorMade, we've got one from Ping, and we've got one from Callaway. I'm gonna throw a lot of images in front of you now and uh, take your pick because arguably, I think I'm almost uh, gonna, gonna, to a degree, leave my opinion out of it because I think that you could quite easily choose any of these and put them in the bag based on aesthetics. It's gonna be about some personal preferences, what you like and address, what you like to see from above. And I always say, what draws you in the first place in terms of shelf appeal. For me, on a personal level, I think the ping is the real interesting one. What they've done this year, Ping, with those hybrids, I think they've almost made them look like, a, let's call them a mini fairway, and perhaps that's what they are, but the shape has gone more into a sort of a fairway wood look. It seems a little bit bigger in terms of mass than the other three that it's up against. And I think that's what it does. Well, what it does, it provides you a lot more confidence at address. I've said in previous videos, they kind of look like, you know, just uh, put a swing on it and get a club on ball and let me do the rest. So I think for me, Ping have done a fantastic job. And it also looks very neutral in terms of where it sits at address. Often they can look a bit, um, a, a bit towed in, if you like. And again, with the Callaway in particular, and perhaps even on that PXG, they raise significantly or rise significantly at that toe end. And it's not something that I particularly uh, like. And I always feel it's sort of already starting me off down that left-hand side. But for a lot of golfers who are fighting against that fade, that slice, then maybe that would be a positive. But what I will say is each of them have really I don't say up the game because uh, this is something aesthetically they're doing quite well at the minute. That's a final ball hit ended up on the Callaway. And to be honest with you, I've hit four clubs, two balls with each, one after the other. With no great effort whatsoever, I think we've just found four fairways. Eight fairways, my maths is wrong. And to me, that's a big deal. Finding fairways is mega important as average golfers. Each of these clubs is gonna be in the region of 200 yards off the tee. Finding a fairway 200 yards further down, that's gotta be a major positive, hasn't it? Right, before we go any further, it's down to your inputs. And uh, what I'd like to ask is out the four that you've seen, maybe visually, uh, what would you choose right now? Which one are you perhaps looking to try yourself? anyone you're particularly drawn to? Are you gaming in these current previous models from previous years? And uh, are any of them on their hit list for you? Because at the end of the day, I will give you my, my thoughts, my dry ball data, but ultimately it's uh, down to you as a punter out there. Are you gonna be splashing your cash on one of these new models from 2021? Because I reckon we should be. These are the clubs we should be really paying some great attention to, which I think I've said enough by now. Before I go inside and uh, I'm gonna collect some dry ball data and we'll see how the these split themselves in terms of performance. One thing that's outside that brings you is a little bit different in terms of acoustics. So uh, the sound I would say split into two categories, the TM and the Callaway are a little bit softer and the more harsher sounding uh, noise comes out of the PXG and the G425. But not a massive difference to split them all, but very noticeably different, as I've already mentioned, at address. That's all I can tell you so far. Let's get inside and uh, I'll collect some dry ball data and then see what splits them in terms of performance. But I can tell you now, not a great deal. One more before we go in. Not a bad finish. Right, a quick 
point to mention in terms of loft and as well just adjustability in these four hybrids. Um, we've got three that are at 19 degrees, exactly the same. That's the TM, the Callaway and the PXG. The Ping, however, is a uh, 17 degree hybrid with a degree and a half added, so it's slightly stronger lofted, all same length of shaft, but all very much stock option shafts as well. And don't forget, these head-to-heads, it's not about finding a winner in terms of yardage or choosing something. It's about presenting the performance of four different clubs. Let's not get too hung up on exactly that half a degree of loft, but worth bearing in mind. The other thing that is worth bearing in mind is that three of these are adjustable. And I think that's a big deal in hybrids. Um, it is a message that I've tried to get across in these last few videos and that ability to gap in between sort of your longest iron in the bag and then going right up there towards your driver i think adjustability of loft is key in doing that and it's not available in the tm product i will say however on that is that in the tm and in the callaway there are also other versions available and in the tm product the pro version if you want to call it that or the better player version is adjustable so it's a bit of an odd one. I'm not sure why they've left it out in terms of this uh, sort of standard hybrid, if you want to call it that, um, but that's what they've done. But I think to me, that's a, a probably marks it down a little because I do think having that adjustability in terms of loft is key to getting your gap in right in your bag and gives you that extra flexibility, versatility, whatever you want to call it. Right, that is all drive ball data collected and I'll go for that very, very quickly. Uh, I just want to mention a couple of other things before we get there and that is the, uh, well, the main one being the price. They're all, in all honesty, very, very similar, but uh, as this is a head-to-head, -head, we'll throw this into the mix. Uh, the PXG hybrid is 210, British pounds this is going to be in. Uh, the Sim Max is 199, the Ping is 219 and the Callaway is 219. That's the deals we found out on, uh, on the web as of today when we filmed. So there's not a great deal to encourage you one way or another in terms of price. The only thing I would say in that is just to bear in mind, the Sim is the slightly cheaper product, but it's the only one that doesn't have that adjustability in terms of the loft sleeve. So that's interesting. Right, we'll start off in the right-hand column, club head speed. Everything remained fairly consistent. So we've got a fair, um, a fair test, if you like, for each of the clubs. We go down to the opposite end, left-hand column, launch angle. They do differ quite significantly, and don't forget, loft all pretty much similar, barring half a degree stronger in, um, in the ping product. But interestingly enough, half a degree stronger in the ping product, but still the product that launched the highest, which was pretty incredible. 12.9 average launch angle, 71 peak height, 131 ball speed, at 205 carry and a really good spin number of 2925. So that's a kind of decent barometer. Let's start with the ping. PXG is the one down the bottom, one of the lower launching products, but interestingly, launch low, but with that spin combination, still had a peak height of 72. Ball speed was phenomenal off this thing, 134. Don't forget club head speed remaining the same. 134 ball speed, that's incredibly quick. Produced a 204 carry. Um, let's go next to the TM. 11.7 .7 launch in peak height 72. Don't forget, look at them three bottom products. Peak height almost identical. 132 ball speed. 204 carry again. So we've got three products now with just a yard to split them. All again, those three products producing exceptionally good spin number as well. And a final product was again lower launch in Callaway 10.9. Uh, didn't produce that average peak height uh, a little bit lower and very noticeably so in the driving range that was without doubt um, not only the lowest launching but um, I wouldn't say the most difficult to launch because it, it, it launched the way it did it launched low and again I suppose it leads me to and it was a 196 carry and that's what leads me to if you're looking at them four hybrids based on that data that I produced you would say there's literally nothing to split them. The things that split them are your own personal preferences, and not just in looks, aesthetics, and all the things that I talked about earlier on in the video, but what you want to use the club for. So you could dismiss the Callaway based on, for me, it was a very low ball fight for a hybrid, and for what I'd be looking to put a hybrid in the bag for, it may be not ideal, like I said. But if you're looking to choose that to pay it off the tee on par fours more often than not, 
then that would be, and again, maybe the conditions that you're playing, so if a Lynx type of track, that lower launching ball is a much more penetrating flight. I'm surprised there wasn't a bigger difference in that launch number, to be quite honest with you, because like I said, it was a far different ball flight than seen on the other three. At the opposite end of the scale, the ping for me, that overall bigger mass and profile, that CG, definitely further back than any other of the hybrids uh, based on purely the size and bulk of it and where they were able to position it, that easy to launch. If I was putting a category of easy to hit, easy to launch, then that's what I would stick that ping product in. It really was the kind of uh, most versatile and appealing, I think, out the four of them based on everything combined. Sound and feel, two categories, like I said earlier, Callaway and TM softer, probably preferred it. Ping and the uh, PXG a little bit firmer on the sound. And don't forget, there's that adjustability issue that you might want to consider, which marks down that TM product slightly. If I was picking a product out of these four, it would be the Ping. That was the most favorable in terms of all categories and no, not ideal in terms of that sound. I can overcome that because of what it did in terms of performance. I'm really loving the Ping fairways and hybrids. I think that's been noticeable throughout all the uh, tests that we've done. But again, it's that profile shape and all those other things that are very much personal. Um, the other, the, you know, the title of this video was, should this be your new driver? And the idea being that 205 yard carry for me off a tee, pretty much straight down the middle. I'll throw some, um, I'll throw some dispersion charts up at the end, actually, if you want to have a look at them. Um, and you'll see that a low again as ever with an average golf we spray it around a little bit but i'm fair to say that each of these things in the five shots in the groups that we hit they'd have all pretty much found the fairway 205 carry on a firm links track in the summer that's going to run on another 15 20 whatever yards and is that arguably better than spraying your driver all over the place out of bounds into the long rough and whatever else so the control element is a massive factor um, i'm not suggesting we drop a driver but i think more attention to be paid from average golfers of playing Perhaps shorter length um, fairways in terms of the shaft and hybrids is something we've been harping on about in the last uh, collection of videos that I've done. And from what I'm seeing, it's definitely going to be the bit where I adjust my mentality in terms of what I put into the bag. And these are four great options in terms of hybrids. So uh, it's just important that the same thing is that, like I said earlier, Although my preference would be the ping, there's no real winner in them for the data was superb for each and every one of them. They'll just be your personal preferences in terms of why you choose one over the other. And as ever, the, uh, the thing is, is to just try them and get custom fit. That's always the message. Right, we've waffled on enough. It was quite, I didn't want to go on into too much detail. Don't forget, this is four sets of numbers, reviewing four clubs. There's always a tendency to, like I said, waffle on a bit. So I've done that as concise as I can. I'll throw up some um, of the dispersion charts at the end and perhaps some of the full data as well for those of you who want to go through and uh, try and analyze that and uh, see, uh, see where that all came into those averages or groups we've just looked at. Right, that's me done. I'm out of breath a bit. Thanks for watching. Um, this is Friday evening, so I will see you again on Monday.